Hello, Anselm Griffin here again with another MATLAB tutorial on YouTube. Today we're looking at ThingSpeak. And I created this channel in ThingSpeak and I was communicating with an Arduino based on the rooftop of the MATLAB HQ in Massachusetts. And in these charts here, I was able to get the average humidity and this one here, the correlation between uh, temperature and humidity. This one, the plot the temperature and wind speed over the last couple of days. Here, a three day uh, temperature comparison. And this here, a gauge for humidity, low, medium, and high. So, I made out a PowerPoint presentation here to give us some idea of what we're trying to do. So, there we have it from. Um, ThingSpeak themselves. So you have MATLAB running here. You use ThingSpeak to communicate with the smart connected device. And that is an IoT, an Internet of Things device, in our case, an Arduino. You have met an IoT device already. Well, my students have where the mouse is pointing. You have met this Nano, and you would have met that in the Robo Sumo, uh, which are relevant lecture. But we're using uh, an Arduino but it's the same thing down here there are some YouTube channels if you need to explore more an API what's that an application programming interface so nearly every web server as part of that remote web server would have an API so the simplest example that I could come up with is there. So your laptop or your little uh, set up, um, you're booking clients in for you know, an exercise session or whatever it is, and you want to create a Google Calendar event. So there is an API use between your computer, your web server with the Google server to create a, an event with the given details. Your server would then receive Google's response process and send back relevant information to the browser, such as a confirmation message to the user. So it's an a, a way of communicating your machine with another with another server. As one of my students said to me about three years ago, it's kind of like a USB, so that it enables uh, your laptop to communicate with another device. Not far off slightly technical here i'm not going to go into it in too much detail but i just put it up there so i've given quite technical stuff for a channel api i'm just going to let you read that and i'm going to not go into detail because it'll only confuse us at the moment uh, there's the charts api so that'd be to get all those charts that we just saw at the beginning and if you're really advanced and technical, you can download the API yourself from GitHub and you're able to manipulate that API to get it to do stuff that you want to do in particular. Just lost my mouse there a second. There we are. So we're going to create a ThingSpeak channel. There's public view and there's private view. And we're going to create a public view so that we want everybody to see it private view obviously is private and only people that are given access to it are able to see what you created on your channel so these are some of the uh, features that I have on the channel so you can embed things speak plugins drag drop organization you can share via social network so you can get things things speak to send tweets so you could have a, a a twitter account you could access the arduino or the nano and then you could send tweets from that so say you're setting up a, a bird watching a camera and there's some sort of motion sensor so if the bird flew by at the camera detect the motion sensor then ThingSpeak would send that tweet out to your followers on the Twitter channel and they would be able to see you know the update of the bird flying in feeding its young so it's open source API 
and as I said before if you're very good at the programming you can download it and play with it and all that sort of stuff I've mentioned some of these before there's Ting Tweet Ting Tweet excuse me talk back so you're able to do a two-way talk with the device you can put it to sleep you can wake it up so say again that aforementioned uh, bird watching camera you wouldn't want it on all the time uh, because you know the battery would drain so you might be able to turn it off say from 12 at night to 3 in the morning or whatever it is and you might be able to turn it on and off in the middle of the day and plugins which we're, we're going to see a plug-in in a while uh, and that's the gauge so you're able to do that and fortunately you if you're doing it from scratch you'd need to be able to program in HTML, HTML hypertext markup language CSS cascading style sheets and JavaScript JavaScript apologies stumbling but it's very simple you just have to copy and paste the code and that's all you have to do you don't have to write or understand what you're doing for the plugins so the aims and objectives as we saw at the very beginning we want to create a channel and get these four charts up and then get that Google gauge up the aim is to talk to an IOT communicate and there's the objectives right code collect and analyze and then our visualizations visualizations will look on the right okay so starting up if you haven't got MATLAB you can install MATLAB on your own machine and this is for TU Dublin students and I've set up the link there and off you go uh, you would want to allow yourself anywhere between 20 minutes and two hours to install MATLAB it can take a while so especially if the wi-fi connection is slow and you may or may not have to reboot the machine two or three times so you know worst case scenario two hours now if you don't want to go to all that trouble you can just create a matworks account and you would put in your technological university dublin uh, email address and because we have a license agreement with matlab that'll do so either of those uh, you then sign up for a ThingSpeak account and because you've already signed up for a MATLAB account there'll be no problem there uh, there's the instructions of how to you set up a channel set up the three fields there as described humidity temperature dew point uh, over here uh, make public we're going to make everything public and then in the API keys now I've for reasons of security I've blanked out the last few digits here and the last few digits here the thing is public but just in case I've blanked them out because I don't want people sort of meddling with my channel so I've blanked out the write API keys and the read API keys so so we want to do the average humidity so if you click on matlab analysis right there we are where it's with the highlighter in yellow then go down to there calculate and display average humidity code will pop up your lecturer or i will go through exactly what we want you to do but nine tenths of the code is there we just have to add a few lines If you're doing it on your own there's my mouse again sorry you copy and paste the read api key i've blanked out some of it and you copy and paste it in there leave the two single quotes alone but in between the two single quotes uh, put in that um, read api p the right api key is also blacked out but i'm not too worried about that for reasons which i'll get to later Now for the other graphs that I want you to do, um, you do them the same as before. I've given the links there. And by using those links, you'd be able to um, create 
those visualizations and I or your lecturer will go through it in detail what we want you to do but it's it's very simple before you do anything just to check just check that when you go to sharing here on your channel share a channel with everyone that everybody can see it uh, doing the plug-in that's the gauge just did a simple one here go to apps go to plugins down there then go to Google gauge the code pops up here you leave that bit alone there uh, you need the cascade that's the HTML bit that's the cascading style sheets bit and down here in the JavaScript is where you do the little bit of code and there's very little code to do uh, if you want to check or edit your code you go to sorry you go to channels apps down to visualizations all of these will pop up click either view or edit if you go into edit you're able to edit the code and then you may remember I said I wasn't that concerned about writing the file if you're using the student version of MATLAB the amount of code you can write the file the amount of data you can write the file is quite limited and when I was running it I was running into uh, limitations about the amount of code I could write and I was getting errors so at the moment I've ignored writing the file okay so I hope that helps and thanks very much for listening